In life, it is always good to know that somebody has your back. Whether it's your long-term friends or supportive work colleagues or indeed your family and loved ones, knowing that you've got that safety net to fall back on in tough times is a truly comforting thing. And trust me, when you're about to take on a dragon the size of a skyscraper or battle the hordes of the undead, you'll be glad to know that the same could be said of some video game companions as well. So let's take a look at the times that we went out of our way to be there for a friend and ended up with a video game bonus to boot. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight amazing secret items unlocked through companion quests. Number 8. Full Powered Masamune if there's one thing that Chrono Trigger has in spades, it's party members. And while it's not approaching Suikoden levels of insanity, there are more friendly faces here than you will probably remember on your first run through the game. However, there is one companion that you are sure to remember, and that is Frog. Mainly because he's a frog, but also because he's an incredibly cool character who can also wield a legitimate weapon of legend, the Masamune. Now, in its base form, the Masamune isn't anything to be sniffed at, and upon collecting all of the pieces and reforging the sword and giving it to Frog, you might well assume that your job is definitely done and go on your merry time-traveling way. However, what some players don't realize is that you can power up this beast of a sword through some timey-wimey shenanigans. The Masamune 2, or Masatune as I affectionately call it, is unlocked by helping a smith find his tools which he's misplaced, leading to you hopping through time to find their location and returning them to their rightful owner. He'll then unlock a new area of your map to explore and that will lead you to a grave. Now this grave empowers the blade with otherworldly might and my lord is this trek worth it. Rocking a base attack power of 200 and a stat increase of 111, Frog won't even be slightly tempted by other weapons as this really is the be all and for enemies, their end all. Number 7. Super Powered Perks Fallout New Vegas now, one of Fallout New Vegas is his is, 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 is most impressive things, outside of its loving attention to detail, outstanding atmosphere, and of course the ludicrous amounts of content, are the companions that you can pick up along the way. The Mojave can be a deadly place at the best of times, and while that pig iron on your hip might be able to take down its fair share of enemies, there's a good chance that once Death Claws, Raiders, and Mire Lurks start rocking up in large groups, you might be sent right back to that shallow grave that Benny's goons dug out for you. So what you need, therefore, is a companion that not only has your back, but can break those of your enemies. Luckily, New Vegas has some of the most charming and wonderfully realized companions going. Everywhere you look is another beautiful face with even more sumptuous storylines. Plus, there's the fact that each of them comes with special perks that makes it all the better. In fact, in some instances, you can buff these perks even further with other choices you make. Take, for example, Veronica, whose definition of fist bump will leave you in a bloody body cast. Completing her companion quest ups her physical damage damage by 30%, and when you remember that she's got a ruddy power fist on her, that is a big hitter. Now, if that wasn't enough, however, you can complete the Dead Money DLC and take Father Elijah's final words to her, as this will unlock a 150% speed boost to her attacks as well as a knockdown effect. Yeah, you can see how both of these combined would make her the most deadly thing in the Mojave, right? Number 6. Unlocking Grand Trine Final Fantasy VI Despite looking like he's borrowed his trousers from Krusty the Clown, Strago the Blue Mage from Final Fantasy VI is no joke whatsoever. For if you follow this distinguished gentleman's side quest, you'll unlock one of the most powerful spells in the game. And trust me, it's hard to make fun of somebody's clothing choices when you're being disintegrated into atoms. Now, getting him to join the party is itself an optional side mission, requiring the player to enter the cultist tower in the world of ruin with Realm in your party, upon which you will make Strago see the error of his ways and make him vow to put things right. And by right, I actually mean use his blue magic to steal enemy attacks and utterly embarrass them. If you happen to have him and Realm in your party when you visit Thamasa, you'll unlock his personal side quest, in which he learns that a monster that he hunted as a youth but couldn't defeat has been spotted once more. With the fire stoked within him again, he vows to slay the beast for good, and in battle he'll be able to learn the Grand Trine, a move that sits on par with the Ultima spell in terms of raw power, and when you remember that Ultima is basically like shoving your enemy's faces into a microwave and hitting the nuke button, it makes Grand Trine well worth learning. Plus, it costs less MP as well, and that is a big bonus. Number 5. The Mask of the Shapeshifter – Divinity Original Sin 2 so in case you've never played Divinity Original Sin 2, let me sum up the entire experience for you in just one word. Deep. 
seriously, overwhelmingly deep. This game has got so much content, so many hidden asides and secrets to find that it puts pretty much every other title to shame. This is a game that you should not go into looking to complete it 100%, as it will most definitely batter your free time into oblivion, especially seeing as even little choices about which race to play as in the beginning might end up eating hours of your life. Well, at least with that last particular example, the game does offer you a secret item to alleviate that stress. The Mask of the Shapeshifter is a companion quest item that you get from Fane, the undead wizard who you can recruit fairly early on in the game. Now, This mask might appear unassuming, but its secret power is that it allows the user to change races on a whim, making for a really useful tool if, say, you wanted to turn into an elf, eat the remains of an enemy – yes, they do that in this game – and learn more information about them, or indeed head into a poison pool which the lizard's race's natural protection against would certainly help with. It's a small but truly useful ability to have on the fly, and we have Fane to thank for this wonderful headpiece. Number 4. Train Your Companions as Jedi – Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 one of the greatest moments in all of the original Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic title was the moment when you finally got to ditch the blasters and vibro blades and wield a lightsaber in battle for yourself. Not only that, but you got to completely customize the look of your lightsaber and indeed the path that you then walked on, either fighting for the light side Jedi or dark side infused Sith. Therefore, when it came to the sequel, many wondered aloud how the follow-up was going to top this experience, to which KOTOR 2 laughed loudly and proclaimed claimed, we're gonna let you train your own bloody Jedi. At no point in the marketing, or indeed the breakdown of the game, was this feature even hinted at. And indeed, many fans didn't even know that this was possible, seeing as it required you to effectively max out the loyalty of certain members of your group that were Force-sensitive. Still, for those that brought the same group with them everywhere, the option would sometimes arise in conversation to take them under your wing, opening up a new skill tree for the companion and cracking open a new approach to combat. You thought that one Jedi was a bit too much for your lasers to handle, mate? Well, try two, friendo. Number 3. Tuned In – The Outer Worlds in a move that shocked even die-hard Fallout fans, Obsidian Entertainment, who previously rocked the world with their amazing companions in Fallout New Vegas, managed to do the impossible by offering us party members that were somehow even more charming. I didn't think it was possible to love somebody more than the snappy arcade Ganon, but Pavati, Sam, and Ellie skyrocketed into my best companions ever made pretty bloody quickly. However, it's the rather undersung rogue known as Vicar Max who provides a sneaky and righteously brilliant perk should you choose to complete his companion quest. His mission, The Empty Man, sees you help the vicar reach the enlightenment that he so desperately desires, and will lead you all over the galaxy and even into his own mind when you join him on a vision quest, aka just watching him huff some unknown chemicals. In fact, it's these chemicals that play a part in his super perk, Tuned In, which you get for completing the quest, as this increases the effects of drugs by 50%, and when you consider that the effects of these drugs make you more accurate in combat, and more resilient to damage, that is well worth the Vicar's almighty come down. Number 2. Super Homies – Saints Row 4 now, as I covered in the Star Wars entry, there's nothing better than taking an already competent companion and dialing up their skills to superhero levels. However, Saints Row 4 takes this concept and does what the franchise does best, aka going utterly over the top with it. Because in Saints Row 4, upon completing companion quests for your fellow saints, you can unlock the super homie version of whoever you were pitching in with. This hilarious title is only matched by the sheer insanity of what you've given birth to through lending a hand, as while you are always able to call in assistance from these saints when you call in a super homie, well, they'll arrive on the scene with a very literal bang, as now they've got superpowers as well. While the immediate benefits of not taking splash damage from your own attacks and being hyper resistant to enemy fire are pretty huge, it's the damage output that these monstrous avatars have that are the true focal point here. Watching your allies decimate enemies like butter meeting a ridiculously hot knife, it often becomes a moment for you to take your foot off the gas and watch the utter carnage unfold around you. This game never mentions that this was a feature, making the surprise of calling down one of these roided up regulars a true joy. And number 1. Turning Negatives into Positives 
As has been made clear by many, many movies on the subject, war is indeed hell. And even the incredible aesthetics can't save the conflict between nations and Valkyria Chronicles from being utterly horrible. In fact, in this version of World War II, things are arguably even more terrifying as this game features a race of beings so utterly powerful that they act like nuclear bombs with legs. And if there's one thing that I never wanted nuclear bombs to do, it was be able to walk. Therefore, is it any surprise at all that the recruits that join your battalion come with a bit of emotional baggage. I too think I would be a bit dour at the prospect of assailing one of these Valkyria head-on, and the game reflects this toll that war takes on people through the use of what it calls negative traits, aspects of the soldier's personality that act as a detriment to themselves and those around them. For example, you might find that a particular soldier has a pollen allergy so can't be set to cover in fields and will take more damage or be easier to hit, or get nervous when facing more than one enemy at a time, sending their accuracy plummeting. However, what the game doesn't tell you is that you can change this. By spending time helping out your squad, bringing them along in battle, and allowing them to level up, you'll unlock special mini-stories which help them overcome their fears. Upon completing these quests, you'll find that a negative trait has been turned into a much more positive one, helping you win the war without the weight of the world on their shoulders. Nice. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight amazing secret items unlocked through companion quests. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, as well as my Warhammer battle reports, and it'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. We detailed today a lot about companion quests and of the true value of friendship, and in real life, that holds true as well. Being there for a friend when they need it is one of the most important things that we can do as human beings. Supporting other people when they're in their low points and celebrating their highs means that you build a support network of people around you who will do the same for you. But I just want you to know something. Even if you find yourself devoid of that close-knit friendship group, I want you to remember you are never ever alone. As family and professionals in the support industry, these people are there for you and want you to do well. So I want you to go forward with happiness in your heart instead of hate, and build bridges instead of burning them, and remember above all else that you are a massive ledge, and you deserve the best things in life. As always, I have been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.